hi guys welcome back to this african perspective thank you for stopping by gen z's are cooked and millennials some millennials okay i know some millennials actually you know they've kind of figured it out maybe they're actually you know better more set up in life but there are a lot of gen z's done with college and they're wondering like what am i supposed to do you're done in college in this type of job market in this horrible job market breaking and it's like you have to do multiple jobs in order to have any money that is enough for you to leave and buy any normal necessities that you need multiple jobs for what like burning yourself out just to survive in this economy like experiencing this type of life and it's like it's crazy many gen z is actually confused on what to even do when it comes to career choices in life they are like oh i'm, I'm already doing this career it's like it doesn't make any sense i'm not making enough it's rough i don't like this particular one so confused about what to even choose or what path to take if they should go back to college again go and study something else economic situation we found ourselves in is rough but before we get right into this video make sure you please click the like button it really helps with the algorithm and i appreciate that so much subscribe to the channel if you're new here and let's get right into it i don't care what nobody say this generation has it way harder than any other generation and old people i love y'all but y'all are lost if y'all really think it's even remotely the same let's just start with the job market how you're not competing with the next man anymore you're competing with ai and all this other technology and on top of that the degree that you spent four years and went thousands of dollars in debt to get is not even as valuable as it used to be you will literally graduate go look for a job in your career field and they still want a minimum of 10 years experience for an entry-level position or we can talk about the housing market and how buying a house right now is probably the worst financial decision you can make please don't come talking to me about how you bought your house 10 years ago and you proud of your two and a half percent interest rate because we could talk about how prices of homes have doubled in the past four years alone and how interest rates are sitting between seven and seven and a half percent right now which forces you to do what rent and guess what? Rent is also at the highest it's ever been right now. We ain't even finna talk about everything else that's expensive from groceries, gas, car insurance. My haircut is even $50. And on top of that, the government's still taxing everybody like none of this is going on. Now Gen Z worker made a video where she was crying about how exhausting it is to work a 40 hour work week and only be paid $2,000 a month. She's since deleted the video, but not before others could stitch into wet the video talking about how she's simply exhausted and barely able to get by. Not only does this woman feel trapped in a toxic cycle of working just to pay the bills, but she's also losing her identity and sacrificing her well-being in the process. Gen Zers were urged to go to college, build career goals, and save money. But even after doing all of that, we're still struggling. Some people still ridiculed this woman, arguing that everybody's struggling and it's just part of being an adult. But at what point should everybody step back and consider that this isn't normal? Instead of trying so hard to normalize it for other younger workers, stagnant wages are a universal problem affecting professionals at all stages of their careers. And living paycheck to paycheck is the norm when it shouldn't be. Many younger workers are frustrated that they will never be able to purchase a car or a home or have children in a financially stable position. They are also frustrated with toxic 40 hour a week work culture. They are overworked, undercompensated, and desperate. A 2024 Wallet Hub survey found that 25% of Gen Zers are struggling to maintain financial stability and lack basic saving and investing knowledge. And it's not just overwhelming student loans, low paying entry level jobs, and a staggeringly disappointing job market, but it's also rising rent costs. Average rent costs for $850 in the early 2000s, but now single postgraduate Gen Z workers pay an estimated $1,800 for the same one bedroom spaces. So no, Gen Z workers aren't lazy. They simply don't make enough money to survive while also dealing with people who are telling them that it's their fault. Okay, let me get this straight. First, I was born without my permission. And now my future is in my hands. I'm cooked. I'm, I'm cooked, y'all. Our generation completely got screwed. I, I, I don't think our parents realize how difficult it is. Um, I mean, everything right now, definitely post-pandemic, it's just, it's crazy. Like, I'm, I'm working 45 hours here, but I, I still have to ask my parents for help living here by myself. So. Interesting job on the weekends because her corporate nine to five is not covering her. You know what's even scarier about this is that when we talk about how unfair it is that most of us have to work two jobs in order to afford the basic life necessities, we're really only thinking about right now. I know we always joke about how Gen Z is aging really fast, but I wonder what the long-term effects of this are going to be physically, psychologically, emotionally. 
Because in the past, you could have one person working a 40 hour a week job and you could live a comfortable life. And I'm not saying that that life couldn't come with its own unique challenges, but imagine working six to seven days a week for the rest of our working lives and they keep moving their retirement age. Oftentimes when we study people who are burned out or overworked, it is a short term problem. We don't really have any data on what a lifetime of working two jobs and still not being able to afford the minimum looks like. No, I don't work Friday nights or I don't work Saturdays. I, like say, I think that's I want to, I want to work and they're probably with a work life mm-hmm. balance. Like say- So I'm sure many of you, like me, have seen these kind of videos floating around recently talking about the fact that Gen Z are lazy. And I am going to explain how this is literally the furthest thing from the truth. So in recent times, thanks to the cost of living crisis and some other things going on, for the first time ever, having one job, having a nine to five, being in a well-respected profession isn't enough for you to be able to save for things like a house or to live a comfortable life. And Gen Z have really woken up to this. We're not going to waste our time. We're not going to sacrifice our mental health, well-being, weekends, evenings, etc. For a job that simply isn't paying us to live the life that generations before us lived. So many people I know have started side hustles, are finding alternative ways to make money alongside their full-time job just to be able to afford to buy a house or to go on those holidays. So we're now really starting to see people who have full-time jobs, who already have their nine to five, starting little side hustles, smaller businesses, just to afford to be able to save for a house or live that comfortable life. And ironically, a lot of these people happen to be Gen Z. So I find it so funny when people from other generations are starting to say that Gen Z are lazy, but we're the generation who are having to work our full-time jobs and also have side hustles and things on the side just to be able to afford to buy the houses that you guys could buy 30, 40 years ago for decent prices. Like personally for me, I chose to do a degree apprenticeship um, because one, it's a great opportunity and you can find out all about that on my page. But secondly, mostly because it allowed me to one, not get into uni debt and two, earn money so I could start saving money for a future and for a house. But unfortunately, I've met many apprentices who not only have to balance work and study, but also have to have another job just to support themselves. So if anything, Gen Z aren't lazy. We're creative, we're entrepreneurial, and we're really resilient to everything that's going on at the moment. Also in that video, they spoke about the fact that Gen Z haven't been through enough adversity or have been mollycoddled. But I think a global pandemic, cost of living crisis, recession, along lots of other stuff going on is more than enough. So if you are Gen Z and you've seen those videos calling you lazy, you're not. It's literally the furthest thing for the truth. And yeah, keep going with those side hustles, guys. One day we'll be able to buy our houses. <laughs> you know, the whole Gen Z's are lazy and this, that, that. I feel like our generation, the millennials and everybody right now, like if you are in a situation where you need to work in order to survive, you're not a person who has a better state where it's like your, your career choice is really great and you're doing well you have a job you have a very good job that pays you a normal you know good livable wage or you are this rich person if you're just you know the people in the trenches to be honest it's like you don't even have an option to be lazy because if you're going to be lazy you know what the you know what the result of you being lazy is right now you don't have an option you have the only option you have they just give you a few options honestly like it's even It's a privilege for you to have the option to be lazy. You just cannot be. I think it's very sad that so many people need a side hustle just to survive. I am very proud of Gen Z for saying, no, we don't trust these companies. We know they're not going to be loyal to us. I would wager to guess that's because us elder Gen Zers uh, watched what happened to our families in 2008 and 2009, and we just have no trust anymore. And I think it's also very obvious that the cost of living is uh, really driving this overemployment trend. I'll also tag Jackie because I love her page. So if you want to hear more about earning extra income, she is your girl. And when it comes to how many Gen Zers have side hustles, I've seen so many different numbers at this point, but 40 to 45% seems to be the average, which is just crazy to think about because it used to be that one household only needed one income, and now it seems like families need two to four incomes. And not surprisingly, 44% of Gen Zers said that they felt financially insecure. And every time I cover something like this, the comments are always, well, Gen Z's still a bunch of kids, that's why. The eldest of us are turning 27 this year. You could say, but you're supposed to be financially insecure in your 20s, but 20 years ago, people were having kids on average at 25. I've also kind of nominated myself as the spokesperson for Gen Z, so don't forget to follow along for more. Y'all want to know why the people back in the day was able to work at them jobs and stay there for 40 plus years without complaining? Because they work eight hours a day, making about $50,000 a year, maybe less. 
and was still able to own a home, have three kids, own a car, and I have all the bills paid and still have enough to eat and go buy groceries. So yes, of course they're able. And then when they retired, they had enough money to retire off of and live off of. And the mortgage half the time wasn't even $1,000. So yes, of course they were able to live their best lives. They tell you, put yourself up by your bootstraps, but hello. Y'all was able to live a great life with $40,000 a year. Am I the only one who has no freaking clue what to do with their life? Like, I feel like I don't want to do nothing. Don't want to be a nurse. Don't want to be a doctor. Don't want to go back to school. Don't want to learn a trade. I don't want to work. <laughs> I don't want to do anything but enjoy the little time that I have on earth and travel. That's about it. Like, I literally have no desires. Like, people, some people grow up and they know they want to do this. They know they want to do that. That has never been me. Like, I have never known what path I wanted to take. Because I really don't want to take any path. I just want to live. That's it. I feel like we have all overcomplicated the hell out of life. And I just don't feel in my soul that this is what life was meant to be. I just really don't. We were supposed to be in the garden, naked, picking flowers, and being happy. Like, it was never supposed to be all this. I just feel like all of this is way too much stress and way too much pressure for the average person. At this point, baby, I'm going back to school. I'm going to pick up another fucking trade. Because I'm damn sure not going to go flip somebody grandma no more. Like, the CNA days for me is over with, baby. Thought about going back to nursing school, but I see the fuck shit over there. I'm okay with that. Patients getting up trying to knock the fuck out you. No, thank you. I don't know, y'all. I'm really thinking about what the fuck I'm finna do. Because I just told my husband, this ain't it, baby. This definitely ain't it. I can't keep being on these people's phones. I'm gonna go take my old ass back to school. It definitely is. Might have to go ahead and finish up that criminal justice degree. Because I only got, like, what, two semesters left? But, bitch, I'm just gonna be dealing with a bunch of motherfucking criminals at that point. Because... Baby, I don't. I can't do this. They probably got more sense these motherfuckers I be talking to on a daily basis. Because, bitch, either that or I'm going to be in a mental institution. Sign me up with my crazy check. The fuck? Just a little tip for the younger generation. Do not rush growing up. I know it looks all fun and all to be grown and do whatever you want. This shit is not as fun as high school was. When you didn't have a care in the world, the biggest problem that you had was figuring out what group you linking with at lunch, who you sitting with, what's going on after school, you meeting at the corner store, like, is there going to be a fight? Like, oh, I took it for granted. Like, oh, my God. Uh, I want to go back. Like, take me back to high school, please. Like, I didn't have a bill, nothing. Since when I was actually born, you know, the only time where I've actually been, you know, wise enough or conscious enough to remember so many things. All the stuff that I cannot remember, those are the days where they told me, oh, things were actually way better. Things were way better. So it's like all I've experienced is progressively like moving into more difficult situations as me, like becoming more, you know, like grown, starting to understand things, or actually entering inside life in a more better way, not like a child running around and playing. No, actually me trying to like, you know, I'm growing up, I'm trying to see things, I'm trying to, you know, experience life, going into life. Things have just progressively moved from oh things were better before and becoming worse and worse and i'm like why why does it have to be my own time you have to tell me how good things were years ago but unfortunately i wasn't alive why are things only really becoming worse in our own time like it's either oh things were better this years and it's like there's no way i was not even like i was still a child then like what was what was i supposed to be doing there to partake in you guys enjoyment or what you guys thought was a better economy or a better situation life but it just became wood. She is not the only millennial doing this. Move to a secondary city, do it now. I lived in LA and I lived in New York for 10 years. Um, it was great. It did what it needed to do for my hustle and my grind. Um, when you hit 30, move to a secondary city. Literally do it. You'll save money. You'll have a more comfortable lifestyle. Your body will thank you because like we're getting up there we need a little bit more space a little bit more air to breathe some trees um look into secondary cities people there's a wave of young people leaving big cities and bank of america actually did a survey to see which of those cities they are these cities include los angeles where the average home sale price is a million dollars and the average rent is thirty two hundred dollars groceries which matter are 11 percent higher than the national average
Next, there's Boston, where the average home price is $830,000. The average rent, which actually shocked me, is $37,000. That's a lot. And grocery prices were also 11% higher than the national average. San Jose, which is pretty close to Silicon Valley, is another city young people are leaving. The average cost of a home is $1.4 million. And rent is about $2,700. Groceries, and this shocked me, is 21% higher than the national average. You are really paying a lot for that avocado. New York, which we all know is very expensive, is losing young people. The average home price is $1.2 million. The average rent is over $4,600. And grocery prices are 30% higher here than the national average. This is actually one of the reasons why I literally buy fruit from the street. And then there's San Francisco, which has an average home price of $1.3 million. And the average apartment rent is a little over $3,600. And groceries, just like New York, are 30% higher than the national average. A part of me hopes that there's a massive exodus of young people leaving these big cities because I think if cities get desperate enough for young people, for talent, that they will have to address these economic inequalities. What do you think? And I quit my job two months ago because I just didn't want to go, period. I wrote a letter of resignation on a Word doc and I slapped it to my manager and I said, I'm leaving. He was begging me being like, oh, technically, like you have to stay, you gotta give us two months notice. I was like, two months? You're lucky if I gave you fucking two weeks. I gave you two hours, babe, I'm leaving now. And we were just going back and forth, back and forth, being like, please, like what can we do? And I'm just like, I don't wanna work. I don't want to come. My back hurts. I'm lazy. I want to make TikToks. I'm going to make more money doing TikTok than I am at this lounge. So yeah, I left. And y'all are going to be like, oh, you don't know real struggle. You don't know real struggle. Thank God. Do you see where I am right now, bitch? I really don't give a fuck. I like chilling and being on my phone. Oh, you're mad. Oh, you're mad. I don't care. I made $7,200 in two months making one minute videos on this motherfucking application these corporations will fire you in one day and leave you with nothing if you want to leave leave babe like you're telling me oh 7200 dollars in two months isn't a lot of money you gotta step your shit up i don't live in new york city i don't live in the united states of america where i pay eight dollars for a bottle of water eight dollars here is gonna get me two days worth of groceries babe. Like, oh, what about your bills? What about your bills? You ain't got no bills. Bitch, my national health insurance that covers vision and dental is what? $12 a month? That's electric and water combined. Probably like $40 combined. This four and a half bedroom house that I'm in, me, my half, $400. Y'all must always from NYC. Not everybody wants to live in New York City. My summer vacation, I'm going to a tropical island in Okinawa. How much was that? $300. I'll spend less money going to South Korea than I will going to Tokyo. It's always the most without a passport saying the most, being like, oh, you don't make enough money, you don't make enough money. $7,200 in New York City, okay, you'll last for what, month and a half? Here, I'm set. I'm good. I'm need to be beat with hammers. Like, I'm sick of y'all. I feel like the people who actually complain or talk about the laziness, those people who just, you know, feel like they are not comfortable with people venting and ranting because i feel like one thing about this generation is that they actually do complain a lot and rant like if they're going through anything and it's a rough time they just they express themselves so much more like the social media for them to you know just go post videos complain rant and everybody else like people are more like vocal they just voice out what they're going through they voice out things and let it out like they they're not gonna suffer in silence when they feel like oh the situation is rough and bad they're just gonna let it out so i feel like some people are not comfortable with seeing this type of situation where it's like they're used to oh whatever happens just keep quiet keep your mouth shut don't complain about it don't talk about it it's like okay then you're gonna be tagged as oh something is just wrong with you they are just not comfortable with that and it's like the gen z's or people who actually complain or rant about situations like this or what they're going through on how the economy is or are trying to be more honest because if you focus on letting the news tell you stuff like it's left for the people now to actually be the news tellers or saying what we're actually dealing with or giving us real-time situations on what is happening in life okay so those people that are saying it then why are you complaining about them why are you having a problem with them doing it it's not like they're actually I don't even see us like doing anything serious or trying to stop the madness or our the bad situations we are all in it's more of like just 
ranting and talking about it complaining about it i wish there's going to be more action on how to stop the situation anyways guys that's it for this video thank you for watching this video to the very end i really appreciate you guys so much please don't forget to click the like button it really helps with the algorithm and that's a way for you to show support to the channel i appreciate that so much subscribe to the channel if you're new here click the notification bell to get notified every time i post a new video and don't forget to please leave your thoughts in the comment section down below i appreciate that so much i'll see you on the next one bye bye